Hmm. Give me one second. I'll be doing that. I'm waiting on some people to get on because I just felt the Holy Spirit leading me to get on. Okay, y'all can see me a little bit better now. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yes, I got on my favorite sweater again. Mind your business. It's called a sweat favorite sweater for a reason. I promise I got clothes. I promise. I just like my sweater. I'm getting work done today, too, so mind your business. Just mind your business. Just mind your business. What you got on? What you got on? You worry about me. What you got going on? Okay, so um, I want to talk to you guys about overflow. And I am being led by the Holy Spirit to come on here and to reaffirm the word of the Lord, okay? And so... Um, I'm going to wait until it hits two minutes because I need more people to be on because I'm going to be on and then off. I'm going to be going off very quick. Okay. Hallelujah. But I was just feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit so strong as I was like, because at first I'm like, yeah, God, I'm gonna write it in my journal. But then I was like, I'm going to get online. And as soon as I said, okay, God, I'm gonna get online and tell the people what you're telling me, his glory just dropped in the room. So, um, let me go ahead and, um, Man, hallelujah. So, mm, hold on. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I got a whole lot, 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 a whole lot going on. Thank you, Jesus. And so, real quick, the Lord... Um, so let me tell y'all what happened. Dear Lord, my Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for this moment right here. I thank you. He keeps saying auspicious April. Father, I thank you for auspicious April. I thank you for this month being a month where you are blowing our minds. I thank you, God, for this week being a week where you are blowing our minds. Father, I thank you, God, for what you're doing in the coming of days. Hallelujah. And may you forever be praised, oh God, not for what you do, but because of who you are. Father, just take over. As I speak forth what you are placing on my heart to speak, oh God, Father, may you bring forth great revelation as you always do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, hey, family, what's up? So, um, real quick. So, here we go. Three years ago, and I'm repeating this stuff for a reason. Three years ago, November 2020, Thanksgiving of 2021, my kitchen overflowed, right? And so um, the Lord had me do seven days of praise and worship back then, right? And so the whole point the Lord was speaking of that time was double increased capacity, blah, 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 boom. So on April 6th, the Lord had communicated to me on, on March 21st that he wanted me to leave my last Airbnb, right? Okay, so, and I'm, I'm repeating this stuff for people who are new here, okay? So as of... Um, April 6th, so, sorry, on 3-21-2024, the Lord had told me, um, I need you to leave that Airbnb on April 6th. Now, my checkout day was for a few days later. It was a few days later than April 6th. So, I was already going to be checking out in April, but God told me to check out earlier than I was supposed to. Amen. He was having me depart earlier. And so on the morning of April 6th, my bags are completely packed. I was obedient to the Lord. I made arrangements. I did what he needed me to do. I followed every step. I was in prayer with the Lord. He told me something. I told him my yes. I began writing it down. I start hearing water overflowing, right? So now look. Oh. Overflow. Y'all remember this video if you watch uh, I forgot what video that was, but I think it's out of other first. Right? So boom, y'all see. Water was everywhere that day on April 6th, the day that God told me to leave. So y'all know on that same day, the owner he told me first to leave and to go to the beach. Like I told him I'm gonna go to the beach, whatever. And he told me, okay, that's cool. Then he texts me like five minutes later, like, um, can you leave within an hour? Right. And so the Lord had already released the word, the one, 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 when it's time, it's going to be time to leave quickly. Because just like the time of the Passover, what was the word? The Lord said,
said, y'all need to be girded. He said, eat the Passover lamb with all of y'all clothes on, with everything ready, because when the people firstborn start dying, they're going to tell you to leave, right? So when it's time for you to leave Egypt, you're going to have to do it quickly, right? Boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. So look, that happened. Cool. So y'all know I'm in a new place, right? So the other day, the Lord had me buy um, these uh, shoes. Boom. But I had them shipped that I changed the address and everything. Somehow, some way, the uh, shoes ended up going to that place. Hold on one second. I wish my um, moderator was uh, on here. My moderator was on here. But it's okay. So, anywho, don, da, da, don, 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 fast forward. So, the shoes ended up getting shipped to that last address. So, where did I have to go today? I had to go back there, right, which is far out. So I had to go all the way back on the other side of town, right, to go pick it up. Boom. So as I was doing it, the Lord is having me recount everything. I noticed that me coming from this area going there, it was lighter. And as I was heading back, the sky just instantly got dark. I was on the phone with my sister. I had shades on. Y'all know I like my shades. Shades is sunray staple look. So I had my shades on and it was instantly getting dark. And I'm like, yes, Lord, because I'm going from the light back to the dark, right? Because I'm transitioning from my new back into the old. But it's only for a second. It's only for a moment that I'm going back to this place to get what it is that I need to take into my new, right? Boom. So fast forward, I end up coming back home, right? I said, so I was spending a day with the Lord. The Lord told me earlier, he said, rest assured, I am moving. That's what God said. He said, rest assured, I am working. I'm doing something, right? Because the Lord told me a word concerning this week last year. And so obviously we stand in an agreement with the spirit of the Lord that is coming to pass because he sent my way last year to confirm something that I never spoke online, that I never told anyone that was literally only between me, my God, I think me, God, and my mama. And my mama wasn't one of the three prophets that told me the confirmation. Amen. These people came up out of the woodworks. I haven't talked to them in a minute. Okay. So you knew it was God. Boom. Fast forward. So today, so I'm giving y'all everything. I'm giving y'all all the whole story. So today, I um, what did I end up doing? So after I ended up, da, 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 came back, da, 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 boom, 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 boom. I gotta make Jay food. So proof, I'm about. I was about to make her food. What start happening? So y'all can't really see it, but so I open the bottom of the sink. Water is just flooding out. Water is just flooding out. Again, where at? In the kitchen, in the new place. On the same day that I went to the old place. Look, look. So What's crazy was the Lord in that moment when he was speaking in that, like I said, God, because, you know, the Lord will speak a word and you forget. Y'all know I forgot what happened two weeks ago. I don't forgot about it because I'm, I'm doing a whole lot of I got to I got to when I tell you I have I'm going to be up all night. I have a whole list of stuff that I got to get done. Boom. So my mind, it ain't nowhere near on what the Lord spoke two weeks ago. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot what I said at the beginning of the week. And what happened then? I forgot. Cool. It happens. But the Lord was like, there needs to be a reminder that overflow is coming directly to you in the place of service. Hallelujah. And so the Lord all day been speaking to me since yesterday or no, since the fast ended, the seven day praise and worship fast on the seven day. What was that? Monday? He been speaking to me about favor, immense favor, your overflow to come from someone choosing to favor you or a group of someone's choosing to favor you. So not only is it coming from your service, but because your service has opened up their heart, it is going to cause such an overflow to be brought to you. That's why the Lord has some of us doing budgets, getting things together, figuring things out, because what comes in is going to be so much 
The Lord is going to give you a promotion at your job. You're suddenly going to have a job. Things are suddenly going to shift for you. And it's not just for a few people. The Lord is doing this for a lot of his children. How can I tell you this? If you watch day seven, I said that word was titled fruitfulness and expansion. And so in that, what the Lord was, or was it titled double? I forgot what it was titled. Double portion, whatever day seven was on Sunray Worships. But look, this is the point. Let me slow down because I talk real fast when I get excited. So the point was here is he started revealing to me about the Shulamite woman. So for those of you who don't know the Shulamite woman, it was her service because I told y'all she honored Elijah and she, because she honored him, she was favored. Now look, how did she honor him? She literally knew that he continued to come through the town. So she prepared a place for him. So whenever he would come, he would have a place to stay. She didn't have to do that. And so one day the Lord, he was like, okay, so what do you want? And she was like, I want a son. I want a child. Right? So that was the whole thing. Boom. Right? We know eventually down the storyline, the son died. He asked her what's going on. She said, all is well. He said, clearly all is not well. Something's going wrong. Boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. So what was the next part of the story that we're getting to? Second Kings eight, which is when he had told her to leave for seven years, to leave her field. Do you know what that meant? He told her to leave her business. He told her to leave her way of making income. He told her to leave what it was that the world says is work. And we talked about this. If you want the deeper revelation, watch day seven. I'm only giving the, the cliff notes versions, the spark notes versions here. OK, and so what ended up happening was. She left for seven years to go work in the field of God's obedience, because when you follow the word of the Lord, you leave the field of man, you leave the field of what makes sense to you and you step into the field of obedience and anything that you do in the field of obedience per even Jeremiah 31 and 16, the Lord is going to bless you according to your works. So you don't have to worry about the sowing that you're doing in when you're in a place of obedience because the Lord is going to bless you on that. But look, how does this all connect? So as she's coming back seven years later, coming back, she has an awareness that this is the year of Jubilee because she's coming back to claim her land. Right. And how do we know she reached this realization? The uh, prophet never told her when to come. He never told her exactly this, blah, blah, blah. So where she get that information from? Shunem actually means rest in place, double rest in place. Right. Boom. But also because she was from Shunem, Shunem is a part of the Issachar tribe's territory. And those who are of Issachar, they know the times and the seasons. So it's important for you to know the times and seasons of God, because when you step into a place, you know what belongs to you because you're like, hey, this is the season of Jubilee. So I'm not just coming back to my hometown. I'm coming back to my hometown and I'm claiming that everything left, it belongs to me. I'm coming to get my possessions. So she's walking in this newfound understanding to go back to the business that God had her put down in faith and in, in, in faith, in obedience. Who am I speaking to? Some of you here, the Lord has told you to leave behind jobs, to leave behind certain businesses because the Lord wanted you to become well versed in who he is and to learn his times and seasons. But the Lord, I hear him saying now, child, it's time to get back to work. It's time for you to go back to the field. It's time for some of y'all to go back in. It's time for some of you to go back and revisit the business plan because now you discern times and seasons. So you're going to move a little bit differently than the rest of the world when it comes to that business that was once a worldly business. But now you have the kingdom principles in you. You have the understanding of who God is. You have the understanding of how to hear his voice. So now you're a force to be reckoned with when you go back to your field. So she's walking, right? But as she's walking, the servant of Elisha is in the ear of the king. He wasn't talking to his friend down the street. He wasn't talking to nobody else. The king literally said, hey, tell me about what Elisha has done. Tell me his good deeds. So literally he begins talking about her. I'm sure he wasn't aware that she was about to roll up in there. So whose name is your, whose mouth is your name in? That actually where they're talking to somebody about you that has the ability to change your life. Literally, he wasn't talking to his friend down the street. He was talking to the king about her, about her faithfulness, about her honoring, right? Boom. Remember, 
Overflow in the place of service. The Lord has been building. He told us that. Now he's revealing to us in scripture where overflow happens because of service. Now look, boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. So he's talking about the story. Then she rolled up in there. Now look, let me tell you what happens before that. Hallelujah. Because this is a revelation God gave me when I got offline. So I can add this up on here. Look. Oh, I got to slow down. Y'all, I'm getting hot. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So boom, she walking back, right? So he talking. Now look, scripture says in Proverbs 25 and 2, it is the glory, it is the duty, it is the honor of a king to seek something out, right? And so what we begin to see is the king was seeking to know something. And then there's a scripture in Proverbs that tells us whatever you seek, you'll, if you seek good, you shall find what? Favor. If you seek good, you shall find what? Favor. He said, what are the good deeds that Elisha has done? So he's seeking good deeds, right? To show favor. Because when you seek good deeds, you find favor. You're seeking good deeds because what's happening as you're seeking, you see something good that somebody has been doing. It opens up your heart to favor them. We all have the ability to favor somebody, right? Boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. So look, he hearing about this woman. Then she roll up in there. So his heart, because he was seeking good, he has now found favor. So now he's in a place where he's hearing the good and his heart is open. Right. So sister girl roll in like, hey, I'm here to get my land back. He like, tell me what Elisha did for you. So she probably ran through the whole thing. I knew it was a prophet coming through the town. So I started to honor him. What is the number one thing that a king lives by? Honor. He lives by honor. He lives by honor. Hey, can I um none of my moderators are on here. So are there some people, I'm trying to see if there's some people that's always on here that can be moderators. Uh, so when y'all see people cursing, saying weird stuff like that, please just completely like, boom, please just completely remove them. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And so long story short, this is the point. So um, doing that, bam, boom, boom. Where was we at? So when you honor somebody, a king lives by honor. So imagine him hearing a story about a woman that was serving a man, right? That was this prophet that was doing these amazing miracles and wonders. So it's opening up his heart to favor her because he hears what he likes. A king loves honor. A king loves a person that serves. Now, look, how can I say that? So now we, oh, hallelujah. I just feel like I'm reteaching the same thing over again, but it's okay. Hallelujah. Somebody didn't hear it, but you need to hear it. And so when we go to Ruth and Boaz, hallelujah. If you go to Ruth 210, it says, who am I? This is Ruth. Who am I that I have found favor in your sight? And what does Boaz say? He says, I have heard what you have done. So what did the king do? He heard what the Shumamite woman did and he favored her. How did he favor her? Because he not only gave her her land back, but he gave her back pay. Everything that she, that land accrued while she was gone, she was given back. That's overflow, right? And it was because of her service. She served. Overflow came in the place of her service. She served the vision of the man of God. She served God by being obedient. Imagine a king got a business mindset. They like, yo, you just left your business for seven years because of a word. You left your job because God told you to a real king, a real man in God that is called to be a king. He can look at a woman and he can see her sacrifice and he can say, whoa, you, you find favor with him. How? Let's look at Ruth. Ruth 210, who am I that I found favor in your sight? He says, I have heard what it is that you have done. All the things, I heard about your service. I saw your work ethic. I saw how you were moving in the field when you didn't even know I was watching you. When you didn't even know that I was calling people, asking about you. Come on, Boaz is new school. He's sending people your screenshots. He like, hey, you ever heard of this person before? Hey, who is this person? What's their character? What's going on with this, right? Boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. And what happened to Ruth? She received an overflow because of her service. The Lord gave, y'all can literally track back. The Lord gave me the first piece. He said overflow because of service. I said, God, why do you keep flooding out kitchens I live in? Why? 
<laughs> and mind you, it happened twice within a period of two weeks. Double, double. And that ain't no in and out. D double, double, right? So I'm like, God, why do you keep doing that? He said, because I want you to see that overflow is coming from my children in the place of their service. Service is based off your obedience to God. I don't get on here and do all the worship videos and stuff for people. I do it unto the Lord. It is my service. It is my ministry. Because when you look in the Greek, I think it's diakonia or diakonia, whatever. I know how to spell it. I just don't know how to say it. it it means service. Service is ministry. And so when we look at the Shumamite woman, she served this mighty man of God. And so because she was serving, it caused favor to find her. Because a person that has character, a person that has integrity, they're a, especially a king, they're not going to sit there and be like, dang, you done did all of that. Look, they're not, hallelujah, they're not going to sit there and just let you go because it says in scripture, Proverbs 3, what is it, Proverbs 3, 27, it says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Do not withhold good to those. So he's seeking out something good and he finds favor. He unlocks favor in his heart for her, caused her to go into overflow. He, Boaz, clearly he said, I heard about you. He ain't just here. He asked about her. He inquired about her because it is the duty of the king to seek something out. I mean, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the duty and honor of a king to seek that thing out. That's what Proverbs 25 and 2 says, right? So he was seeking out out who is this woman and as he sought it out his heart was being open because he saw that she had a heart of service he saw that she was one that decided to serve another person's vision he saw that she didn't have no issue picking up the scraps she didn't have no issue taking the small things from the lord and using it to produce what it is that she needed she didn't run away from a person uh, from her stepmom she, not her stepmom, from her mother-in-law. She stayed with her. Hallelujah. And so what I'm coming on here to tell somebody today is the Lord is reminding all of us that overflow is coming in the area of service because you have gained favor with him. And not only have you gained favor with God, but you have gained favor with man. So the overflow that is coming to your life, it is a reflection of the favor, the mercy that God is showing you, but also the mercy he is going to cause other people to show you. So when the Lord has been telling you to get things in order. This is why he's telling you to get things in order. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I could not stop seeing 555. It even, 555. But I'm like, Lord, what are you talking about? Because I know when I see 555, they got multiple meanings. Okay. It can be favor. It can be grace. 555 can also represent the breath of God. If you are into the Torah, I mean, if you're into the Hebrew letters and numbers, but also he showed me that it represents the spirit of revelation. So him unveiling something so you can have greater understanding. Hallelujah. I like that. Greater understanding. Boom. I look serious. But the point is, is that um, he kept talking to me about favor because God says that this is the appointed time. And what does it say? At the appointed time, and you know that you have reached an appointed time in your life. When you know that you have reached a 10-10 in your life, the Lord... You cry out for God to have mercy on you because Psalm 102 and 13, it says, it says, oh, God, oh, God, arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the appointed time is here. When it is the appointed time, you cry out, you give God back his word and you say, Lord, this is my appointed time. You say in your word at the appointed time that you will show me mercy. Father, show me mercy. Show me mercy. Grant me favor because the appointed time to favor me has come. And with that favor comes overflow. Overflow. Whew. So for people who want to sow, I see somebody already sold $5, 555 in some form, some form. If you can't do that, if you can't sow at all, that is okay. Share the word with somebody, but 555 in some way, shape or form. Hallelujah. Five, look, five comments, five likes, five shares, five, five, five is the number. Because God continued to show me that. And I was like, Lord, he even gave me a dream where he highlighted it in red. That He didn't highlight that specific number. He highlighted another number that literally when you break it down, it literally means 
five, five, five. And so we don't do numerology over here. We do, uh, we don't do numerology, tarot, crystals, chakras, any of that stuff. No, this is all biblical wisdom and knowledge. Okay. Hallelujah. And so, um, cash app is, could somebody type it? Cause I, I know y'all know my cash app by now. It's the cash app, the healing prophecy, cash app, the healing prophecy, PayPal is donate at the healing prophecy.com. If I can get somebody to type it in, that would be great. But cash app is that. And so, um, it's cash app, uh, dollar sign, the healing prophecy. And then the other one is, uh, what's the other one? Why am I, why am I brain drawing a blank? Donate at the healing prophecy.com. But the whole point that I want to say is, is that the Lord, he's like, you have to get on. Because when I tell y'all, twice in two weeks, another flood, another flood of water, God not playing, period. And I have proof of it. Go back to the previous, I forgot what word is titled. It's titled Overflow, Overflow 2. And then let's go back all the way to 2021 on the Healing Prophecy Ministry, which is also my channel. Which is also my channel as well. I'm just not active on there no more. But the words are still active because the spirit is on it. But I just came on to be obedient. Thank you all for people that are sowing. Whatever God leads you to. But you don't have to sow at all. You just got to believe that the Lord says overflow is coming to the area of service. Now, if you know you ain't been serving God and you just been doing whatever, then be real. Go to God in prayer and be like, Lord, but if you know that God has been talking to you, not only about it being your appointed time, but also he's been speaking to you about your service. Child, oh, how you have honored me. And a lot of y'all been having issues. Thank you, Holy Spirit, hearing the Lord say that he is honoring you because you feel like you need to be doing more. Learn to sit and hear what your father is saying to you. He's proud of you. He's proud of you for what it is that you have done. Some of y'all, he gave me that word. Y'all was on live with me a few weeks ago where he said you have taken something so difficult and you made it look easy. You were on a long, arduous journey, but you made it look easy. Some of y'all may not have people all over the world that, that y'all influence online. You may have people in your community, but they seen you going through what you were going through, but you still continue to serve. You still continue to say, hey, sis, I'll pick you up and take you to church. Even though in your mind, you like, God, you know, she live a little far out and I only got $10 in my account to go do this. You are still serving. And because you served, overflow is coming in the area of your service. And it is because you learned to honor the word of the Lord. It is because you learned to honor people. We have a lot of people out here chatting, but we don't have a lot of honor. If people don't know how to have honor, how to walk up to somebody that's uh, servicing your car, how to walk up to somebody at the store. It's easy to read their name. Say, thank you, Sade. Thank you, Miracle. Thank you, Alexis, for what you did for me today. Thank you, Valet. What's your name? Valet, what's your name? Okay, I might have to ask you a few times, but look, I'm, I'm acknowledging you. Even those moments. Do you notice how you begin? To, and this, this is for people where the Lord has already begun to elevate you to certain places. Don't you ever forget what my mama taught me. You treat the top exec just as well as you treat the person that is serving your food, just as well as you treat the person that's picking up the trash, just as well as you treat the person that is painting the hallways. You honor people. Honor is literally the key to you opening up doors for yourself. Don't just honor God and honor who you think will bless you, but honor every person you run across. Whatever it is that you do, have a code of honor. That's one thing that I do. My mom taught me that. Y'all know how I talk like this? I talk like that to the top execs. Period. Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five. The Lord want me to say this. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. So the other day, I went on the rooftop. The Lord told me to go on the rooftop. I said, okay. I went over there. I'm just sitting there chilling. I see this group of five dudes. 
they got on like Dodgers. I guess it was a game or something. They was just chilling, talking. I guess they get ready to go to the game. They start doing um, bubble gum, bubble gum in the dish. So I started laughing at them. I was like, what y'all, what y'all doing bubble gum, bubble gum in the dish for, right? So I'm laughing at them, right? They said, what you laughing at us for? I said, because I wasn't invited, you know, being funny. So they come over to me and I said, let me pray for y'all. In that one moment, I prayed for five men, one woman amongst five men. And I prayed and I prophesied. And this ain't to put light on myself. But it's to show that you, back to the word yesterday, same light, different colors. You got to be who God calls you to be. But also, more importantly, understand that even something as simple as that, me, and I, when I prayed for them, two of the young boys that was there, it was two young boys, I literally saw them as tall buildings and I told them, I said, you remember this day. God says you remember this day because you got you to gotta know who y'all are. These men are going to be so powerful in business. That's all I kept hearing with them. And I don't know what they do. If they live where I'm living, they do something good. They do something where they make some money. You get what I'm saying? So they doing something, right? But even in that moment, that boldness, and, and I don't know why God got me saying this because I was just going to say it because of the number five. But the Lord wants some of you guys to be more bold about just being you, just praying for people. I literally stop people in the street and I say, let's pray. If I feel it on my spirit, I don't pray for everybody, but I be feeling it. I'm like, let's pray. And you want to know something. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear this and then I'm off here. So I was having a conversation with a girl that had an evil eye on her thing. Now, mind you, I'm telling y'all this because this is what the Lord wants you to understand. This is what true ministry looks like. Hallelujah. It's not just servicing online. It's what you do in real life. Hallelujah. So long story short, again, God told me to go to the rooftop. Guess what they was doing on the rooftop? A whole lot of stuff that I didn't want to be around right? But God told me, keep walking. I beeline my way to the jacuzzi. I sat down. I had my, I had shift in the atmosphere playing in my ear. You understand how prophetic that is? Because the Lord was bringing me into a place where people were doing things that was not glorifying him to be the shifter of the atmosphere. That's what some of you have to be. You got to realize you're a light that's sent by God. Some places he's going to have you go into, you're going to be like, Lord, but his protection is with you. So long story, Story short, boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. I'm making my point. I'm in the uh, jacuzzi. This girl walk in. You know what she doing. She walk in. Da, 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 da. So I'm talking to her, right? And I said, yeah, don't light that up in here. And she was like, oh, okay. Da, da, da. I said, mm -hmm. I said, I don't smoke no more. And so she's like, oh my gosh, how'd you stop smoking? Boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. Share my testimony. I said, let's pray for you. Right in the middle of the jacuzzi praying for her. She said, for the first time, I felt love in a long time. Now, look, I'm telling somebody this because I want you to understand the importance of carrying God's fragrance. It's not about judging people. I could have judged that she had liquor in her hand. I could have judged that she had a B roll, a B in her hand. I could have judged all of these different things, judged how she was looking. But no, I recognize that even with an evil eye on her chest, even with that, I could see somebody that was lost. I could see somebody that had moved away from who God was because there's some pain and some hurt there. And I chose to acknowledge the child still crying inside and pray for her, right? Boom. So on that same day that I prayed for those five dudes, she had popped up. And I started talking to her about ministry, right? And I said, I said, remember that feeling you said you have not felt in a long time since you were a little girl? Like she was sitting around me. I ended up playing shift in the atmosphere for the whole pool people. I had my speaker up there. I started playing. She said, oh my gosh. You know, she was lit. She was like, oh, I love this song. She said, Sh I said, yeah, shift in the atmosphere, right? So even in that moment, let me tell you, she said, I feel like a little girl. I have so much peace. She's like, I haven't felt this in so long. So look, that was just an experience for a moment. But what happens when she's shifting, reading chakras, reading tarot, praying to the evil eye guy, whatever it is, 
She's going to remember. And I told her, I said, there's a reason why. Because it was even a guy next to me when I prayed for him. I'm going all over the place. But the guy, when I prayed for him, one of the guys next to me, he's like, oh, I never prayed before. I don't know. I said, don't worry. I said, we're going to do this together. All of us, we're going to pray together. And they was like, they was like, yo, I've never experienced anything like this before. Right. And it was a simple prayer. It was just the Lord praying. Right. But his spirit was present. And so the Lord wants people to understand that he's not having you spend time in his presence selfishly for you. He's having you spend time in his presence so that you can linger in his fragrance so that when you go out, you can be like I tell people the Baccarat 540. You can be the Miss Dior. You can be the Dior Sauvage. You can be these perfumes, these colognes that long last because what happens is they encounter the presence of God. When I come on here, I'm not just teaching y'all stuff. I'm telling you they encounter the presence of God. So when they sit there and they're smoking their liquor and they're drinking their weed and they're trying to get that feeling of peace they will remember that moment this funny girl hey came up to them and prayed for them and they encountered God so now they're like whoa how do I make what I experienced for a moment my experience for a lifetime and so when I had told her and I talked to her I said so I said one day I said you may not know me again it may be 10 years from now I said and you'll be sitting there trying to figure out how to get peace I said, but you're going to remember that prayer. You're going to remember what you felt. And you're going to remember that Sunray told you the only way you access this is by building a relationship with the God that I serve. And so in that point, she began to realize she was even seeing it. She was like, whoa. I said, yeah, you'll see that that evil eye, it ain't helping you. Right. And I did it with love and respect. And so God wanted me to tell somebody while I'm also on here that this is what he is calling you to do. He is calling you to step out into places and to shift the atmosphere. Understand that when you go into certain places, the Lord is going to have his presence so powerful around you. Literally. And it's not about you. It's just about you showing up. I could say, oh, yeah, it's because y'all probably be thinking, like I said, follow sincerely Sunray. I don't be praying as much 10 hours, 13. I don't know what y'all be thinking I'll be doing over here because that definitely ain't it. Right. But I do be in God's presence. I love the Lord, but it's not me. I said yes to be a vessel. So when you go out and you simply pray for that mama, you may not have money to give her, but you prayed for her. And that experience, she going to be sitting there like, yo, what was that? You're going to say, God, the God I serve. And so when she's ready to go smoke weed, when she's ready to go drink, and when she's ready to go have sex, when she's ready to go do these things, and she's looking for that feeling, she's really going to be like, whoa. He's really going to be like, whoa. And that's what's going to lead them back to God. And so you pray as led by the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not telling y'all to just be out here just praying for everybody because I can't pray for everybody. And that's just real. God will tell you that. But when there are people that God leads you to and you just say, oh, I got to pray, do it. Because that's sowing a seed. I didn't tell them, you got to give your life to Christ. You better repent. You better do this. Mm -mm. The Lord taught me how to minister in the way that he taught me how to minister and evangelize to people. And it's through his love. It's through showing people like, hey, when I was gay, when I was doing this, when I was doing all of these things, my father loved on me. And my father can love on you too. Hallelujah. And so for people, and, I, and this is what I want people to understand. I guess this is the whole point. The Lord wants people to understand. This makes sense now. That was service. How many of you here have been doing that already? Know what the Lord is doing for you. Know what the Lord is doing for you. Because you served people. It's a lot of people. I see some of y'all comments and God sent me to shopping centers. God sent me to do this. It might be people that reject you and did that. Sent you to preach a word of the Lord to somebody, but you served. And that right there is your service and overflow is coming in the area of your service. I may not see the seeds from those things for years, but that's okay. That's not why I did it. I did it because I was like, look, I felt led to do it in the moment. Hallelujah. And so I want you guys to, to, to begin to walk courageously in who God has called you to be. Walk unapologetically. I have conversations with people and I probably sound a little bitty loony. I've been like, yeah, God said this. God said this. God said this. Mm -hmm. And God told me this. And God said, they'd be like, why are you here in L.A.? Because God said, 
but it shows people you can have that relationship with God. You can have access to the good things in life and literally not have to fornicate your way because I'm in L.A. You'll be surprised at things people do to make money out here. Hallelujah. So, who oh Jesus? Hallelujah. You get the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You get the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. You get the glory, Lord. Only you get the glory. You. Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's all family. Doom da da boom ba bam. Boom ba da bam boom 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 boom. I pray that this encouraged you in the midst of my boom ba da bam boom 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 because my mind be da 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 da. But yeah, if you want more details about the Shunammite woman and that teaching and whatnot, go to day six of worship. No, I lied. Day seven of worship on um, Sunray worships. Make sure y'all go check that out. Okay. And so everything is going to be there. Oh, sorry, D. My bad. Sorry, D. There you go. But yeah, so boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. Yeah, we're out. So that's what the Lord wanted to say. Y'all, overflow is headed. Overflow is heading in the area of your service. And it is because God has shown you favor and he's going to cause you to have favor with man. Amen. So pray this blessed y'all. I know this blessed me. God knows it has been a journey. Just kidding. It's definitely been a journey. So um, love y'all so much. And I'll talk to y'all later. Sunray. So Sunray Worships is a whole channel. Okay. I got four channels. The Healing Prophecy Ministry, which I'm no longer active on, but the words are still active. And then I have, um, y'all asking me too many questions. Hold on. Let me hurry up. You got Sunray. You got sincerely sunray did i say i got four channels oh sunray worship so sunray worships that's where we did seven days of worship okay and so for people that are looking to sew on the website um it's still cash app and paypal on the website but it's the healingprophecy.com everything should be in the description box of this video i feel like it should be over there <clears throat> somebody said i wish i could take you to lunch girl you might as well take me outside because all I'm eating is trees. <laughs> it's a waste of your money. Take me, take, take me outside to a tree. Sincerely Sunray is my vlog channel, okay? It's where you get to see me outside of ministry because I'm really not a nun. I promise you, I'm not a nun. <laughs> I actually get out and do things. I'm actually going to a concert this weekend. <laughs> going to a concert. Boop, 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 boop. It's a gospel concert. Don't worry. We're not out here with no other people. But yes. And even if it was, there's some artists I still listen to that are good, like RB artists, some of them. But no, it's a gospel concert I'm going to this weekend. Hallelujah. So you will see all of that on Sincerely Sunray. That's my full personality. Because when I'm on here, I gotta be funny, serious, you know? But over there I could say, say what I want. Yeah, PayPal to Healing Prophecy. Hallelujah. So somebody said, what's 888 mean? Sunray. Type in Sunray, hashtag 888 on YouTube, and you'll find out. 
It's a whole teaching. You'll find out. Hallelujah. So did this bless y'all family today? I am out here eating trees. All my, my mama, everybody be laughing at me. They be like, uh, when we come to LA, we're going to take you out to eat. I said, and eat what? You're going to spend all your money to take me to a fancy restaurant just to eat a salad. Please appease me by taking me to Whole Foods and buying my groceries. Thank you. <laughs> like, baby, well, what you taking me to a steak restaurant for? Who finna eat a steak? Who going to eat dessert? I don't eat any of that stuff. Who going to eat bread? I don't eat that either. What? So, yeah. Hallelujah. So, um, okay. Yes, overflow. So I pray that y'all were all blessed. And yeah, boom, bada, bam, boom, boom. I don't have recipes to share yet, but I'm going to be doing some more recipes. Follow me over on Sincerely Sunray and I'll put them on there. Whole fruits or sprouts. Yes. The planted 888. Yes, Seth. Yes. Yes. So look, I got three different videos with AAA, right? Exactly. Watch all three. You might find your answer in all three. Can I shout out another prophetic YouTuber on here real quick? I don't care. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Why the tree diet? I just like trees. Y'all ever see that video of Rick Ross where he was like, I eat pears and <laughs> I eat trees. And <laughs> Can I just like trees? It ain't a diet. I just want to eat it. Why can't I just want to eat trees? What's wrong with trees? What y'all got against trees? <laughs> they said, do you actually eat trees? No, I'm just being funny. I really don't eat trees. All right, y'all. So love y'all so much. And I will talk to y'all later. Make sure y'all go check out the channels. Sunray Worships. We worship every morning at 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. You guys are currently here on Sunray where I do prophetic releases every week on Monday. It is called The Prepared Ones. It is a TV show where we prepare you for future, uh, for future triumphs by releasing strategies, okay? So that comes out every Monday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes, it comes out 7 a.m. my time. Boom. And so on um, Sincerely Sunray every Friday at 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I release a vlog, okay? The vlog this week is going to be very long, but it's going to be interesting, okay? So that's what I'm releasing there. And then I have the Healing Prophecy Ministry. That is the one that I started my ministry with. So you're going to see baby Sunray, but you're still going to receive a word. Hallelujah, okay? So I love you all and I pray that it blesses you all and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.